Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Hisense WFQP7012 EVM washing machine. Now there's no way I'd remember that model number. It's probably one of the longest ones that I've read out in one of my YouTube videos. So I thought I'd just read it out from the energy label. Anyway, in this video I'll be showing you this washing machine. What I want to do is I want to show you around the washer, some of the features and benefits that it offers. Just for a start, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up. So you might have seen from the title or the thumbnail to this video that there's something a little bit different about this washer uh, and it's one of the dimensions. Uh, clearly the height will always be a standard height. So on this one you're looking at 84 and a half centimetres high or just under 33 and a half inches. That's pretty standard. The width of it is just under 60 centimetres or again around 23 and a half inches. Again that's standard to pretty much all washing machines in the market. Uh, but the one thing that really stands out is the depth of it, front to back. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm just going to show you what a standard washing machine is. So I'm just going to take you around to where our other washers are. Now, it's something I've not really done before. You can see it's, uh, at the time of recording, it's Christmas time. So we've got a Christmas window in there. That's what the festive balloons are. So I'm just going to show you, as you can see, we've got a load of washing machines down here. This first one is an Indesit, so the size of that one, you're looking around 56 centimetres. Uh, I've got another couple of hot points here, so about 58 centimetres. And just show you around the other side. So this is one of the, the Fisher, Fisher Paykel, and that one you're looking at 60 centimetres and then one more uh, let's pick one of the Siemens machines this is probably one of our best selling washers on in the company so uh, 58 centimetres so normally between 56 to 60 centimetres tends to be quite a standard size let's just work our way back around here there we go just set back up there we are so that's me back here. And what I want to do is I'm going to swizzle this round to show you this machine. So this one is super skinny and the measurement in this one, you go into the front here, which is where I've measured and show you all the other machines. So bear in mind, all of the others are about 56 to 60 centimeters. This one, this high sense is 39 centimeters. And I'll be honest, <laughs> when we first opened it, I was a little bit concerned because we have had other brands, not Hisense before, we've had other brands uh, where they are very skinny like this and what they've ha what's happened is that they started to walk out. Uh, when it's been installed and everything's level and everything, uh, during the maximum spin, if it's not quite level then they start to walk out. So that's the only thing to mention. If you're going to buy this machine, uh, or one of the system machines, then just make sure that when it's installed, the feet are completely level. It's level on the surface, uh, because I get a little bit worried that on some of the very skinny machines like this, then it might start to walk out. But I just want to show that again. So 39 centimeters, around f just over 15 inches, which I don't think I've ever seen a washer of this size before. If you are going to the very front, so if you are going to include the I suppose to the very front here, then really looking about 41 and a half centimetres, around 16 and a half inches. So I've just zoomed in a little bit closer to the machine, and as you can see, it's nice, easy dial to turn to switch it on and off. Uh, the off position is just at the top, so there's no separate switch, which to be honest is something I always like now. Uh, I must say, Hisense, uh, they've done a really good job of the display. There are not many brands where it's got this nice clear and even big writing, uh, the big digits on here. So I'm really impressed, especially for the price that this machine is. Then I'm really impressed with the size of the display and also how clear it is. Uh, a lot of customers, um, we, we show the displays because you will find on some brands, especially when it's red and some of the, the numbers are quite small, then sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to read. Uh, but all I want to do is I just want to go through some of the programs and what they offer. So first of all, the Eco 40 to 60, that's quite a standard program really on all washing machines now. Uh, and what this is designed to do, 
Uh, on this program, this is the only program that you can't hold to the, well, the main program that you can't hold to the temperature on. So it doesn't allow you to do that. But this is one of the main washing programs where you can wash a full load of seven kilograms. Because uh, not many of the programs, and it is quite standard on most washing machines now, not many um, programs on here can you wash of the full seven kilograms. Uh, but with that one, the you can do. And the main advantage of this kind of program is it is a much more energy efficient program. Uh, so on this one, uh, on a full load, you're using around 55 litres of water. Uh, that's for a full load. And, but you will see that the time on it, it's around three and a half hours. Clearly that will vary depending on the load that you put in. If you put in a much smaller load, then that will reduce the time. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you were to put say half a load in, then it will consume around 40 litres of water. So it's not quite half the amount of water for half the load. Uh, that's why I always try and recommend saving all your clothes till you've got a full load, because you will find that uh, it will be more energy efficient to do the full wash rather than just putting a couple of items in. Uh, but that's the, so the Eco 40 to 60. The cotton program, similar time uh, with that one. That one uses quite a lot more water. That's around 75 litres of water for a full load. So you're comparing 75 litres as against around 51 litres uh, for the, the Eco 40 to 60. So it does make a big difference. Uh, that's why I'd always recommend having a look through the instructions when you first get the machine. I'm not normally a huge fan of instructions. I normally like to uh, sort of follow my own way when it comes to appliances and gadgets and things. Uh, but this is one scenario that it can really benefit you if you have a read through the instructions. And again, you can wash a full load on the cotton. As you go into the synthetic program, uh, this one again, you can wash the full seven kilograms. Uh, a much quicker program, so it's still around two hours. Uh, as you go around to the mix, uh, with that one, that one you don't have the option to wash the full seven kilograms, so that one's around three and a half kilograms, so it's about half a load. And again, with the wool, you're reduced on that one, you're looking at two kilograms. Uh, this is a good program, so this is the Quick 15. Uh, I suppose, really, with this kind of program, it's good as a freshen up program, or if you just want to wash a couple of items, uh, if you've had something in the cupboard for a while, you just want to give it a quick rinse through or a quick wash, then you've got that option, but that's just for one kilogram. Uh, as you come to the bottom, you've got rinse and spin, spin only. Drum clean is a good option uh, for, as it says, cleaning the drum. Uh, it's designed that you don't need to put anything in there if you don't want to. Uh, but I'm glad that Hisense have put that on there because people are quite conscious about keeping appliances clean. And if you try and keep them clean, then it can help to maintain the washing machine and that can really help with the energy efficiency. And also it can help with the lifespan of the machine as well. As you come around to the next one, so 20 degree program uh, with that one, that one is a full load. So you've got the maximum of seven kilograms. And again, it's just under two hours. So it's not too bad time-wise on that one. Then you've got down sportswear, dark wash, uh, you've got the baby and steam care, so you've got a couple of steam programs on here as well, and the allergy steam. Uh, so some of these ones are really good, uh, and again, I'm really impressed that you've got the steam option on this kind of machine at this price point, because normally to have a steam option, you'd have to go quite high in the range with most brands. The main advantage of steam is it can really help, so if there's somebody in the, the family that suffers with things like allergies, uh, as it says for this program here, then offering the steam option can really help. Now I've gone through the programs briefly. I'll just show you some of the options underneath. Uh, first of all, you've got the temperature option. So if I just come around to the cotton program, because uh, this is one of the few programs that you can alter the temperature across the whole range. So it will start off at 40 degrees, which to be honest is probably one of the most popular temperatures still. Uh, I know people are washing at lower temperatures, they are going down to 30 and 20, uh, but I, th I still think 40 is a good compromise of having a temperature within the wash uh, against the energy efficiency. But what do you think? Um, when you're doing your washing, what temperature do you tend to wash at? Are you a person that is going down to the low temperatures where you're washing at 20 degrees or 30? Or are you a bit more traditional where you're still washing at 40 or even 60 degrees? 
Uh, some people are still going up to 90 degrees if you're doing certain things like towels. Uh, but I think people are washing at much lower temperatures. So what do you think? What, uh, what temperatures do you wash at? So what temperatures are you washing at? Just pop it in the comments below. I'll be really interested to hear that. Uh, but so 40, 60, 90, and then no temperature. So that'll just wash in the temperature of the water that's arriving into the machine. And it starts at 20, 30, and then back up to 40. Now I must say, this is one of the few brands on the market. I know it's an odd statement where when you press the button, it goes up in temperature. Most brands, when you press it, it will come down. So it's quite a, just an interesting way of, of doing things. Spin speed, so the maximum spin speed on this machine is 1200, and it's going up, so 400, 6, 8, 1000, and then 1200. So again, it's a really good step of, uh, of spin speeds. What you can do is you've got a favorite option, so if there was a, uh, for example, if you wanted the synthetic and if you wanted it on 60 degrees and if you wanted to spin at say 600 RPM, then if that's your favorite program that you always use, then just select that, press and hold the favorite button. It will save that for you. And then if you go and change that, so if you change it to the cotton and then just press favorite, then what it will do is that will revert back to your favorite saved program. So again, that's a really good option. Uh, but at the moment, I just want to just select the, the cotton button. Uh, but the next one on here is the options. And this goes through, so it toggles through uh, different options. Um, first of all, this will be the pre-wash. So I'll just show you that. So a standard, so the cotton program will be three hours, 29 minutes. The first option here is the pre-wash. Um, the main advantage of pre-wash is it just adds some extra time at the beginning of the program. So if you're washing things like rugby kits or football kits, they can get really dirty. Uh, or if you've got teenagers like I have, then sometimes that might be the only option to get the smell out of the clothes. Uh, I'm sure one of you have got some smelly teenagers as well. But uh, anyway, so that's the, the pre-wash. And the next option on here is the extra rinse. Uh, extra rinse is a good option if you've got, uh, I suppose similar to the allergy steam option that I mentioned earlier. If you've got people in the household that suffer with allergies, then that can really help to add the extra rinse at the end. If you've got things like eczema uh, or sensitive skin, then that could be, could be quite a lifesaver for you. And the next option here is the uh, intensive option. Uh, all that does is that just increases the wash time. Uh, so I'll just show you that again. So for this one, so it's gone up to three hours, 58 minutes. And as standard, it's three hours, 29. So it's adding around half an hour to the program. But again, that's just increasing the wash time. So if you have got quite a soiled wash that you wanted to just increase the wash time a little bit, then you've got the option within there. Uh, you've got the delay end. So this is a delay timer. Uh, this can be very good if you've got things like Economy 7, uh, which is pretty, well, I'll say it's fairly common in the UK. Uh, people tend to uh, want to delay the start of the program. And on this machine, you can delay it by up to 24 hours, and then it just reverts back to the standard time. So it can be good if you just want to delay it for energy saving reasons. Um, other people want to delay the start of the program because they don't want the washing sitting in there all the time. So if you're going out to work, say if you're going out, say eight o'clock in the morning, if you put out in a two hour wash, do you want it to finish at 10 o'clock? Not really, if you're gonna get back at say six or seven o'clock. So what you can do is if you were del to delay it by around six or seven hours, then the idea is that it just finishes almost as you get in home, and then the clothes are not sat there for too long because that can uh, really help with things like the creasing if they're not sat there on their own too long. Then you've got the start and the pause option at the end. The reason it's got a pause is if you start the program and it starts to fill with water and if you just find a sock on the floor then rather than waiting for the next program what you should have the ability to do is as long as there's not too much water in the machine then you've got the option just to pause it. It normally takes a moment for the door lock to release. You can open the door, pop the sock in then press start again. And you've got the soap drawer on the left hand side. 
Uh, it's quite a standard layout. You've got the pre-wash, main wash, conditioner, and also you can take it out if you want to. So when it comes to cleaning it, that's really easy. Uh, I'd always recommend if you are going to pop it in the dishwasher, which some people want to do to give it a really good clean, then just take this off. So just by taking off the, the couple of clips at the bottom, you can just release the drawer front. And then that just means that you, know, you don't need to pop this in. Uh, personally, I wouldn't recommend putting this in the dishwasher, the front part, because uh, what could happen over time is it could lose the glossy finish. You can see it's got, I've got a bit of reflection there from the lights above. Uh, but what you don't want to do is to put that in the dishwasher, because if you lose the glossy finish, it just looks a little bit silly compared to the rest of the fascia. And then to put that back in, just, just give it a gentle nudge, then you're ready to go. So something I do really like about a machine is the door. Uh, I know it's quite a chunky door. Uh, it's, it's probably not to everyone's taste. I think some people will like a, a much thinner profile of door, but personally, I really like the look of this. Uh, you've got the handle at the top right here. So even if you suffer with hands, if, you, uh, if you've got things like arthritis, then at least having a, a good grip around the other side, it's nice and easy to open the door. Um, it's not quite 180 degrees, but it does get the door well out of the way when you are uh, wanting to load the clothes. And, oh, so you're looking at 28 centimeter porthole around 11 inches. So again, it's not the biggest on the market, uh, but I think for a seven kilogram load, that's more than big enough. So I'll just show you the energy label on this machine. As you can see, it's a C rating, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, again, if you're comparing it to other brands or other models around this price range, then a C rating is actually pretty good nowadays. Uh, just having a quick look, so 59 kilowatt hours per 100 cycles. Just proving that it's a seven kilogram load. Uh, the three hours 28 is based on the Eco 40 to 60 program. Uh, 42 liters of water, again, that's on the uh, Eco 40 to 60. So it's a, a, again, a, a very energy efficient machine. Uh, it's got a B spin, so that's the, the spin rating on here. Normally, to get to an A rating, you have to go much higher in the range or even to go to a much higher spin speed. And then it's just got the noise level of 74 decibels. I'll just show you on the back of the washer. Uh, now, as you can see, you've got the... I'll just show you around the back of the washing machine. Sometimes, if you're installing it yourself, it can be useful just to see where everything is located. Uh, so, first of all, you've got the waste hose at the bottom left here, and you've got the mains at the top left and then you've got the water connection at the top right. You do get a cheeky little hose with it, so you do get a new hose. If you're not going to use the hose, I would always recommend. So if you're going to use a current one that you've got, uh, for example, if you needed to have, say, a longer extension hose, if you've already got one in place, I would recommend just taking the washer out of here and ideally the filter. You've got a little filter as well in there. So just take those out and pop them into the uh, into the current hose you've got. That can really help with the seal. But again, you've got that at the top here. And you have got the four transit bolts. So the transit bolts are designed to hold the drum in place while it's being moved. Of course, once it, uh, if you're going to install it yourself, you have to take these out. Uh, because if you don't, then it will damage the machine and that won't be covered by the manufacturer's warranty. If you're thinking of buying this machine, I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Hisense WFQP7012 EVM washing machine. Again, there's no way I'm going to remember that model number. I might as well just read it from the energy label. But I hope you enjoyed the video on that washing machine. Uh, all I'd normally do is please leave any comments on the video, whether you enjoyed it, whether you didn't like it. If there's something that you wanted to know about, if you've got any questions on it, just pop it in the comments because at the moment I've got this on display. Uh, if you have got one of these, or if you have got a high sense washing machine, let me know what you think about it because I'd always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching.